Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Thank you so much for the organ. That I appreciate that. That was it's so good to hear the organ. Um, the, the announcements in the bulletin is uh, if you'd like to read scripture lessons, let Deb know. And you are all invited to the wedding of Morgan Nielsen and Aaron Cordles on Saturday. Um, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. <laughs> Let's honor Vicar Mary. <laughs> no, the part that I want to announce is to bring non-perishable items for the contact center. I think that's, that's a wonderful way to show appreciation. And leave your bulletins on the back pew. If you want, wish to keep them, you can. Leave them on the back pew. And I, I just wanted to mention that with the funerals that we had in the past week, it was so nice to hear the church bell. Um, I was outside already with, um, with Ruby's funeral, and Jean rang the church bell. And I'm not, most of the time I'm not outside to hear it, and it was so good to hear the church bell. And with both the other, and going out to the cemetery for both funerals too, the bell in that old church was ringing. And it was so good to hear that. It was so good. Okay, let's begin worship.
Let us say the prayer of the day together. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure. And transform us into a people of righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Our first lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 25. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin. The foreigner stronghold a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will honor you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm and shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall and like the heat of a desert. Your silence, the uproar of foreigners, as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud, so the song of the ruthless is stilled. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheep that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the people's disgrace from the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted him, and he saved us. This is the Lord we trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Who will read Psalm 23 responsibly? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me to lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You, the Lord, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You are God and your staff that they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading comes to Philippians chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Eudodia and I plead with Sinti to be the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, Help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Once more, Jesus 
spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. We have gathered here today to deepen our desire and our commitment to love you and to love our fellow human beings. May the words we hear in the communion of the Holy Spirit strengthen us to do those very things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The parable that we listen to this morning from the Gospel of Matthew deals with a wedding. Or more specifically, it deals with a wedding reception. In the story, we are presented with a king who had a son who was getting married. And so the king decided to throw this huge party to celebrate. And the king made out an enormous guest list, inviting as many people as he do, inviting them to come and rejoice with him. Just like Morgan and Aaron are inviting us to come and celebrate their wedding. Now in this parable, it's not too hard to figure out who the king is supposed to represent. As you probably figured out, the king represents God. And so the first thing this parable has to say to us, that God is a God who wants everyone to come and celebrate with him. The word celebrate has a joyful and positive message. There used to be a church in Sioux Falls that was actually named Celebrate. I think it's still, still there. And some of the ELCA churches ordered, I have one with me, ordered inserts for their bulletins. And they're called Celebrate. And they have a Prayer of the day, the readings, and the prayers of intercession in them. And I saved all mine. Whenever I got one, I saved it. <laughs> they're nice to have. And they're called celebrate. Nothing makes God happier than when people accept his invitation and come to the celebration. So in the parable, we can understand why the king was upset when the people he invited didn't come. Here the king was pulling out all the stops to make sure that his son's wedding was a special occasion. Wedding celebration. 
celebrations in Israel were big events. Do you remember what Jesus' first miracle was? He turned the water into wine at a wedding because they ran out of wine. Who turns down invitations to enjoy good food and fine wine and conversation and the good stuff that a wedding has to offer? Imagine the scene that Jesus talks about in his parable that the king throws a wedding for his son and people actually ignore the invitation. The first verse of this beloved hymn speaks to the tension in this parable of potential guests of the king that miss the opportunity for fellowship and joy. What a fellowship, what a joy we find, leaping on the everlasting arms. And so when the servants returned to the king and told him that none of his guests were going to come, the king was upset. What was he going to do? Already, the ice sculpture of the swan was starting to melt. <laughs> the slices of cake were starting to dry out, and the green beans were getting soggy. And any minute, his son and his new bride would be coming into the banquet hall, and how were they going to feel when nobody was there? So right away, the king ordered his servants to hurry out into the streets and invite everyone they could find to come to the party. It didn't matter who they were. It didn't matter what they were like. Just invite them, the king said. And so the servants did just that. They went out and they invited anyone and everyone they could find, and within a half an hour, the banquet hall was filled to overflowing with guests. Actually, when Jesus told them about the king sending troops to destroy them and burn their city in verse 7, he was trying to warn the religious leaders and any other people of his time what can happen when they take God's graciousness lightly. This story was written in Matthew's world as he knew it. But it is also the world as we know it today, the present age of the church. You see, there is a party right here at Longman Lutheran. It starts at 10.30 every Sunday. I realize that now during the COVID-19 pandemic, things are a little different. But there are still ways for a person to see and participate in a worship or a celebration service. If you know of anyone who does not have a church home, please invite them to the Bond and Lutheran family. And perhaps we should stop calling it worship or church and start calling it celebration. For we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ through Holy Communion, and we even celebrate the fact that God has adopted us and made us part of his family through baptism. God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Christ Jesus. Every Sunday we enjoy a celebration of our Lord's presence as we assemble around his word in worship. Whether it be on TV or online or in the parking lot, or in a church. A lot of people like to be invited. They like to be on the list. But not everyone is willing to follow through because whenever we receive an invitation, something is always expected of us in return. For instance, when you're invited to a wedding, it is expected that you will bring a gift and show up in proper attire. Just like the wedding we will have here at Bondon this coming weekend. Husbands, imagine this scene with me. You've been invited to a party, and after spending the day working out in the yard 
or in the fields or in the barn or in the office, whatever the case may be. You dash into the house and get cleaned up. You go to the closet, but you suddenly realize that you're not quite sure about what this affair is supposed to be, and you need to wear probably slacks and a sport coat. But you find an outfit that you think will work, and you put it on, comb your hair, get to the car keys, go out in the living room where your wife is waiting, and she looks at you and she says five words to you, just five. She says, is that what you're wearing? And you know how to respond. You go back to the bedroom and you change your clothes. <laughs> and yes, even in Jesus' time, people were also expected to dress in a certain way for weddings. They didn't have tuxedos, but there was a particular kind of white robe that people were supposed to wear. And in the parable, it seems that when the time had come for the wedding reception to begin, the king walked in and looked around as he, walked, as he was looking around. All of a sudden he noticed a man sitting there who wasn't wearing the right kind of clothes. And so the king marched right up to that fellow and said, Hey, buddy, what are you doing here your dress like that? And right away, the king called for his bouncers and had the man tossed out on the street. Now, some may be thinking to themselves, wasn't the king unfair? After all, maybe he couldn't afford a wedding room, wedding bowl. And that what's more, the man might have been given no, you know, notice ahead of time. Many interpretations have been offered for this particular text. One such explanation is that a wedding robe would not be expected from someone who had been summoned off the streets. During that time, the host of the party would take on the responsibility of providing wedding robes for everyone who was invited. And as the guests arrived, someone would meet them at the door and give them a special robe that they could slip right over their clothes, something like I wear on Sunday mornings. And like the banquet host, God invited and urged the people of Israel for centuries through the prophets, but they turned away. Then God sent Jesus, the Son, and he was crucified. You see, several times in the New Testament, the reference is made to putting on new clothes. And what that refers to is back around the time of Jesus, when people were baptized in a river, when they came out of the water, they were given a new white robe to put on. And putting on those new clothes was a reminder of a new way of life that is involved in being a disciple of Christ. Isaiah 61, verse 10 declared, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. The wedding robe in the parable represents the righteousness that God gives us. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus began his ministry by going around and telling people to repent, to change the direction of their lives. And this is the same idea in this parable. And if we look closely, we will discover that even in this seemingly difficult parable of judgment, in which some end up in the outer darkness, there is still a deep vein of God's love and grace from beginning to end. It's there in the idea and the invitation of a wedding banquet. It's there in the successive invitations and in the ever widening circle to invite everyone 
to the wedding banquet. Go therefore into the streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Perhaps the wedding robe represents Christ's forgiveness to cover up all our brokenness. One source that I found said the wedding robe symbolizes a garment freely supplied to those who have been given faith in the divine giver. We need to be dressed not with choices of our own will, but with the grace of God. And who knows about our friend who is weeping and gnashing in the outer darkness? The parable hints that the character of the king is such that sooner or later, he just might send a slave or two out that direction to issue another set of invitations. The grace and love of God is found in the assumption that you're in by virtue of the invitation. Not as a result of your place in the world or even some heavenly school scorecard God has been keeping. It's all about free, accepting, loving grace of God. Yes, there are those who will choose wrongly. There are those who will ignore or reject God's invitation. But God still continues. God has prepared a festive meal, a place for you and for all people. Let us not act in fear of a God who will throw us out. But let us act in gratitude to a God who brings us in. Won't you come? Amen. The song is the Lord's My Shepherd or Brother James Ayer.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life In grateful response to God's endless bounty of grace, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, unite the wills of your people. Empower us to be of the same mind in the Lord, so that through word and deed, we might give faithful witness to you. Lord, in your mercy. Creator of valleys and green pastures, of small towns and urban centers, give your care to this world. Inspire in us your creatures. A love for all you have made, and grant us wisdom to care for it. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, establish your peace in the world. Give the leaders of the nations a desire for reconciliation and a yearning for justice. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, lead all who are sick to the healing waters of your mercy. Bless the work of doctors, nurses, and caregivers, and through their efforts, restore the sick to health. And we especially pray for Kiva, April, Devon, Ben, Derek, Ruth, Heather, Beth, Karen, Doug, Keith, Paul, Andrea, Madison, Wendy, Jenny, Tracy, Gannon, Craig, Tori, Jason, and Dawn, and we especially pray for those of, that have the COVID sickness and those who have recovered. We pray for our shut-ins at Autumn Mins, Paul, and at Wakanda, Bob. We pray for members and friends and relatives of members in the armed forces. Matt, Brayden, Gray, Tyler, John, Matt, and those away at college. Skyler, Eric, Trinity, Shell, Laura, Caitlin, Isabel, Justin, Claire, Max, Mary. And we pray for missionaries in Cameroon, Anne and Willie Lange. And you may say out loud the first name of anyone you want to include in prayer or silently in your heart. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, by your power, grant this congregation the faith to stand firm in Jesus Christ. Send your spirit to this place, so that through all its ministries, your wisdom and truth might be made known. Lord, in your mercy. God of blessed hope, and comfort those who grieve with the promise of new life in Christ Jesus. And we especially pray for the family of Chris Frame and Moody Cuts. Give us the blessed assurance that you will swallow up death forever. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, holy God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Sharing in the peace of Christ. Our offertory prayer, let's say that together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending song has got to be with you till we meet again. Can you repeat that? 